everybody. This is Pam at the Paper Outpost, and we are continuing our work on our ephemera storage or mass making storage or embellishment storage. Basically, we're turning some paper, some collaged paper, on a file folder into a pouch, and we're using Mod Podge to seal everything in. Um, what has been done so far is I glued some uh, paper sheets to the uh, file folder and then I Mod Podged it all down. Then I sprinkled some glitter, glitter, little glitter balls, little glitter, um, three to actually three different types of gold glitter. I don't know how well you can see them. Maybe you can see a little bit there in the sunlight. Okay, yeah, it's really pretty. And um, backing it up. Um, so now we're just going to finish off this project. It's a very easy project. I use some real nature. I put in some um, nature. Um, nature leaves, leaves from nature, uh, one, two, three, four of those, and then just some extra little pieces of whatnot that was sitting on my desk. So I thought that might be a fun way to make extra storage because we all need more of that. Okay, so after I sprinkled the glitter on, I did another layer of Mod Podge, which I didn't film, but it just went ahead and dried. And it probably took two or three days to dry because I put the Mod Podge on pretty thickly. So... Now we're just going to go ahead and trim the, I peeled it off the plastic that it was sitting on. So I've got these, these kinds of edges here that I need to cut off. So I'm going to use a metal ruler and a craft knife. Let's see if I can find a sharp one, which is always a good one to use. It looks like a new one. Okay. So let's just carefully with your blade, shave off the excess. Okay. That looks pretty good. Go slow, watch your blade, always never take your eye off the blade. Never, 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 never. Okay, here we go. And again, oh, I really need my glasses. Got two pairs sitting over in the other room. I'll have to go with these. Which ones can I actually see with these? I think these. Oh yeah, there we go, I can see now. Okay, so just trimming this up a little bit. Going slow. Okay, this edge, I think you can see this. So how's everybody doing? Are you guys having a great day? I hope so. Hope it's full of papery pleasures for you. Maybe you're thinking about the, hall se the holiday season coming. Um, that was fall and holiday in one word. It's called the hall season. Yep. <laughs> also is what we do with our shopping, the hall season. Okay, and then this should be the last side. Okay. Um, all right, so dumping off, dumping that, all the excess we don't need. So now, um, I think what I'd like to do is just sew it together. You could technically glue this together and be done with it. Just run a bead of glue down here and here, and then, um, you know, squash it together, maybe paper clip it and let it dry. But I think I'm going to go for the sewn finished edge. Let's see how this goes. I don't know how it's going to go, but I'm hoping it goes well. And um, we shall go from there. So let me just clear the deck and I will bring my little, oh, here we go, my sewing machine over here so you can see what I'm doing. And all I've done, let me turn my sewing machine on. I think I'd like a zigzag stitch. And maybe make it a longer and a wider stitch. So 0.2 and point or 2.0 and 5.0, longer and wider. And I think what I'm going to do before I sew the sides together, I'm going to sew the top and the bottom on their own. Let's, that'll be a good test to see if my machine can go through the Mod Podge this thick. All right, got my foot on it. Put the foot down, putting my foot down. All right, oh, oh, hey, everything's sliding, hang on. Oh, okay, hang on, we get you in the right place here. Okay, here we go. Now things are happening. Is it, yeah, it's working. And my machine is sliding. It's on a slippery surface. But I think it's working. Seems to be going through the Mod Podge very easily. I do have those little metal balls. Maybe that wasn't the greatest thing, but I think the needle will just push them to the side. Let me slide this a little closer. There's things in the way here. 
Imagine that. Oh, hang on. I have an idea. Let me move that this way. There we go. All right, maybe you can see better. Okay, that up there. Okay, hopefully it won't break. All is well so far. That bar is in the way now. Okay, let me move that there. You can still see. And I'm gonna do the little weird back and forth thing just to just say we did. To lock that stitch in. Oh, that's really fancy talk, Pam. I knew, I knew. Okay, so that gives us a nice finished edge, right? Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing on this side. And, okay, slide the whole thing back. Uh, here we go, sewing, sewing, sewing. What are you, some weird piece of something. What is that? Some unknown something. I've got an unknown something on here. Oh no, oh, we'll just sew over it. I don't know what it is, it's part of this now. Forevermore. Okay, carry on. Carry on. It's all right. Just sew yourself. Look at it. No, no, no hands, Mom. No hands. Oh, okay. All right, almost done. Almost done. The quick back and forth. Back and forth and back and forth. Okay, that's so good. All right, now pull it off. Trim it. Now we have, we have this. I gotta get rid of this thread, but I'll trim that off in a sec. All right, not bad. Not bad at all. Okay, let me put you back over here. Hold on, don't get seasick. All right, I know, I know, I know. We do our best though, we do. Okay, let me elevate you up a little bit. Make sure we're all oriented. Oh, elevate you up a little bit more. Okay, a little bit more. Okay, there, now you can see. Okay, so basically, um, you could do this multiple ways. I'm just gonna fold mine in half so that I have an open a big opening here, but you could also fold it halfway and do a flap if you so choose. This is practically a purse. You could really make a purse out of this. It feels that strong and sturdy. Um, kind of kind of cool. Um, okay, I don't know if I would really make a purse like this. But I don't know if I'd ever make a purse. Maybe I would one day. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and sew the edges. How about that? Pretty much the same process. All right, let's just get it down here. Nothing fancy. That's right. This is the land of nothing fancy. Okay, here we go. This is fan. Now I'm going through the double thickness. Will it work? Will the needle go shooting out to the right or left? This is why it's a good idea to use uh, um, glasses while you, you, you sew. Okay. Now, so far, so good. Maybe I'll back this up a little bit just to lock it in and then go the other way. Okay, so far so good, so far so good. I have no idea how much thread is left on my bobbin, but I'm just going for it. So this really does feel like a thick plastic, very strong, very sturdy, pouchedness knit thing. Yes. Okay, I hope I, I hope I did it even. Okay, I think that's pretty good. All right. Now, so yeah. Yeah, looks pretty good. Okay, now just do this side. No, I'm going to do it this, this way because then the stitching will look the same. Okay. And we're off. Oh, yeah, Sally. Hold on. Hold on. We're almost through the storm. We're going to make it. Just got a couple more stitches to go. Everybody hold your breath. You never know with the sewing machine and Pam what's going to happen, but we, we do our darndest. We try and improve a little every time. Sometimes we completely forget what we're doing. Going to do a little backward thing to lock it in, and then we're off and running. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Let's go over here. Yeah. Okay, so now we have the pouch. I have some strings I can free myself of. And I do have a little bit of red. Okay, um, but I do have red on the inside, so is it that bad? I mean, it's used for personal purposes, so that is kind of nice, though, isn't it? It's very nice. really do like that, and it has a great feel with the little metal finabar balls in there. It almost feels like Braille 
It's a really cool feeling. So yeah, it has some nub to it. There is nub texture here. Oh, I have apparently a little tail of thread over here. Get rid of. And now I have this beautiful um, pocket. Let's say I'm doing um, mass making of anything. I can store them in here. And then when I'm ready to use them, I can just pull them out. Um, oh, I know what I wanted to do. Yeah, let me grab one of those things. I thought this might be nice if it had... Oh, uh, uh, oh okay, fighting. Fighting with my stuff. Okay. Where'd my stuff go? It's not where it's supposed to be. Why is that? Who moved my cheese? Oh, not there. Oh, wait, I can use that one, though. All right, let's just take that one. Okay. So I thought it might be kind of fun to put one of these little drawer labeler things on. Maybe I could put it here and just put what's in it so I know. And you could, you could actually brad these on. That's not a bad idea. You could brad it on, but I think I'm just going to glue it on, honestly. See how it holds. And put a little piece of paper behind it. Okay, where's the glue? I moved my glue so it would be easier to access, and then I keep forgetting it's, it's over yonder. Okay, so I'll see how well this sticks. This is Fabrifix glue, clear silicone glue. Um, whoop, looks like this if you've never seen it. That's the bottle. And I transfer it into the Sugar Bells icing piping bottle. Okay, so that's as easy as, yeah, there you go. I have a, a place to put a label, which is kind of cool. And actually the little metal element looks kind of cool. I mean, it could jazz it up a little bit and put other little metal ele elements on it. That might be fun. Let's try that. Suddenly I have a few little metal elements that we could put on it here. Which wouldn't be too bad. Let's see. These are kind of cute. Somebody just recently sent me these, these little metal scrapbook embellishments. Yeah. So maybe we'll find something here. It's like a little gardening one or something. And we'll see what we got. Let's see what we got. Let's put this stuff to good use. So you can actually glue things on après the fact. Why not, right? Oh, there we go. Okay, I'm in. And I think the this is brass and this is silver. So I think I might go for the brass. Maybe this guy might look. He might. Be, it's actually part of a little a fence. Maybe we'll just glue him on there. That's what we'll do. A little gardening fence or something. Okay. And he could be hung on something, but your your days of being hung on something are, are never going to be because you're going to be glued on something. And that's just where you will reside until somebody about five years old picks you off. <laughs> How about that? i just put it here. Okay. Put on an angle. It doesn't actually have to make any rhyme or reason. It's just, you know, a thing. Or maybe a hat. That would be nice. Let's maybe put a few of these on there. Whoops, since we've got them, get them out here and use them, right? There we go. All right. These are those un little unusual things you come across or somebody came across and uh, just sent it my way. So I'm, I'm putting it to good use. I promised I would. All right. Um, right down, down. Here, maybe here. Oh, yeah. There we go. Okay. So now you could imagine if you had a bunch of these on a shelf and you could stack them like that, all full of amazing little goodies. Wouldn't that be fun? That would be a lot of fun. So now I think, like, what, what would I put in here? No, I have lots of things I could put in here. Oh, my goodness, I have no shortage of things. Um, here's another example of one. I, this is a really sorry-looking one, but I just want to show you what else you can make these out of, and they're very easy. This is really sorry, but it, it, this is what it looks like. Okay. It was made out of a T-shirt, and the interior part, like the, what it was constructed out of, was a magazine, like a magazine that was stapled here and here. I believe, if I remember correctly, don't quote me, but I do have a video on this, how to make a pouch out of a t-shirt. And this one I lined on the inside too, so it has fabric on the inside. And I gave it a little trim at the top. No, it was fancy, but this houses all my words. So if you want like one of these to hold all your word, um, you know, printouts and things like that, that's a good way to do that. And I should probably put a, a label on that, but I, I know my pink one is for words. Um, yeah, so this could be more decorated and I think I'll do that. All right, this is absolutely unnecessary, but fun. Okay, so this is the category that that falls into. Um, so yeah, I just grabbed some stickles and stickle light things in similar tones. I've got black Nouveau drops. What does this gold, bright gold Nouveau drops? Is this just called black? It's probably called ebony or something. Yeah, ebony black. And this is stickles in gold. And this is liquid pearls in bronze. So they're all kind of the same color family tone. 
And um, let's just have some fun with it, right? Can't really go wrong here, can we? Um, maybe I'll put a dab there where the nails would go. Okay, that's kind of cool. And maybe the light, the darker things. Oh, well, you're not gonna be able to see that very well. Um, let's let's go with this one. This uh, maybe I won't use the gold sparkle because I've got so much gold sparkle already. Okay, now this you'll see more. All right, da, 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 just side around out around the shape of this. Okay, 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 and. Maybe this dun, dun, dun. Uh, stickle, uh, liquid pearls, down up, down up, down up. You can go around the whole side thing or just part of it. Okay. All right, here we go. And this one maybe kind of gets confusing in the notes there, but that's okay. I'll just give it a shape that there is something here to look at, to denote in amongst the notes. Hmm. All right. Let's see. Maybe some black? Why not? Maybe we'll go around this. This might be fun. All right, down up. It's a little thick. Needs to get flowing. Flowing, I tell ya. Okay. Now you can do a lot more with the black as far as accenting your work. I think I'm actually working on the back of this. I just realized that because of the color of the stitching. But maybe then I'll let this dry and then I could also do some on the official front. But maybe this is now the official front. Oops. Always a good sound in the craft room. Oops. I have a polywog tail right there. Oh, I think it's going to be all right. Um, yes. Well, maybe we want to do... Oh, don't stick your hand in it, Pam. Um, just do some of these down here. There we go. Okay. So we've got black on this side. We've got the bronze. What is that? What color is it? bronze liquid pearls on that side um, okay that there and um, then this is the black so maybe I'm going to come down the sides Okay, there we go. All right, turn it around. Without much ado, come down the other side. Whoop, got a polywog. That's all right. Down up, down up, down up. If you really stick to that, you won't have a polywog tail or a tadpole tail. Um, even if it gets thick and gooey, it just seems to go up and bounce back into itself. All right, maybe I need to come across the top. Do I? Yeah, okay. Do, do, up, up. Don't, don't rush. I know I'm, I tend to rush, so don't rush. Just take your time and ease your way around the mountain here, and you'll be done before you know it, and life will be grand. Okay. I didn't do the bottom, but I think that's okay. I think that looks kind of cool. Everything's a little more amplified. You want something? All right, how about we do something to get your hands off here? Okay. We won't do that all the way around. Maybe we'll just do some, like, side things. Okay, there we go. Okay. All right, there we go. So I think we've accomplished great things together. Look at that. Um, so I'm going to try and find a little piece of paper to fit in there. I think it would be best if I used a piece of cardstock so that I can get it in and out of there relatively easily. All right, let me find a piece. Here we go. Now i got to make it 
wide enough. And this one there. Yeah, that's how I measure. I know it's embarrassing, isn't it? But that's pretty much what I do. Let's see if it slips in. Oh, it does. Okay, so now we know it too high. I'm going to take it there. Let's try a little higher than we think, just in case. All right, let's see if it goes. Oh, it's a little, it's a little tall. That's all right. Pull it out. Don't stick your finger in the stickles, Pam. Don't do it. Don't do it. All right. That's where dexterity comes in. Okay. Of which I have none, so... Well, maybe a little bit, but that's it. Uh, just a couple little thin slivers. Now everything should fit just nicely. There we go. So now we have a place to put a label on whatever this is. So a kind of a fun way to use up um, differ, you know, collage elements, nature elements, uh, cricket elements, metal elements, sentiment elements, um, just for fun, you know. And let's just take a look at the other side. I won't put it down, I swear. Don't put it down, don't put it down. So this is what it looks like with the darker stitching, just because I had darker thread on top. So I, I think that looks nice. Yeah, I probably would have used that for the front. So I probably will decorate this, even though I have the label on this side. I do. I do. It's true. But it feels very sturdy, very strong, like it could handle years of a little ferret going in and out of there nonstop. So there you go. Let's see, sunshine. Are you here? No. No, we're not, we're not any, anywhere to be found. Let, let me go on the hunt. Where are you? Hey, it's, it's work time. Whoa, oh, he's on the couch. <laughs> yep. He almost fell off the couch as I startled him. I'm sorry, son. I didn't mean to startle you. Um, I hope you forgive me. Yes, you didn't fall off the couch, so all is well. All right. Are you ready? Because you're, you're, what do you mean you're not ready? Oh, too late. Hello, everybody. It's Sunshine. Welcome. No, I wasn't sleeping. I swear I was, I was reviewing my notes in my mind. That's what I was doing. Reviewing my notes for my Cub Pop Reporter update from Sunshine here at the Paper Outpost. Okay, so... Mom made that. Yep, there you go. There, we have one of those now. Aren't we lucky? You can have one too. All you gotta do is make one with all your stuff around. And next thing you'll know, you'll have plastic paper, fabric-y kind of stuff that you'll make pouches out of too. So, now it wouldn't go well if Sunshine tried to make one because there's too much glue involved and it would be very messy with Sunshine's little fur face and fur paws would be a disaster. And that's why dogs don't craft, because we would become the craft. We would embed ourselves in the junk I'm leaving now. Bye. <laughs> Where are you going? <laughs> I, I, I thought I'd have you comfy. It's not comfy. It's comfy. Well, yeah, it's kind of comfy. All right, well, but we're back. Okay, so that's why dogs don't craft. I don't think cats craft either. I've never seen a bird craft. Well, maybe. But dogs, not so much. Not in this neck of the woods. It would um, not go well. So we just sit from afar and admire those of you who do. <laughs> Is that what you do? Yes. It's, we're very contemplative about it. I'm snoring. I'm so contemplative. I'm, I'm, are, you looking, are you looking at me? You're snoring with your eyes open. It's... Can you hear that? I am snoring with my eyes open. How is that possible? Maybe I'm... I'm not snoring. Maybe I'm choking. Mother, what are you doing to me? I don't look like I'm in distress. Okay, let me see. Yes, I am asleep. I am so asleep. <laughs> Did you have a lot of play today? Yes. Okay, is that it? Yes. Okay, then I'll let you go back to bed. Okay, thanks. All right, happy crafting, everybody. <laughs> All right, there you go. Tidbits from Sunshine. What? Can, well, I don't even know how I can follow up with that. Um, welcome to everybody who is new. Thank you for everybody who has been here. I hope you're um, having fun with your papers. Um, if you don't know... I have a free monthly emailed newsletter where you get a free digital image emailed to you every month. If you sign up for the newsletter, the link is down below in the description box, as are all my links. And um, I don't know if you Google Paper Outpost newsletter whether it'll come out, but you could try it. You could try it. Maybe that might work. Um, 
let me let me do that right now and just see. And you don't have to wonder. You don't even have to move. I'll do it for you. I, I should know that. I've never looked for that. Isn't that the weirdest thing? But I don't think it'll come up, but we'll see. Um, okay, my, my computer's slowly waking up. Hello, computer. Come on, fire up for mama. There you go. Come on. There, we're, we've come to life. Now we're going to... We're going to open a tab. Yeah, this could take an hour. Okay, here we go. All right, no, that has to check to see if I am really me. Yes, it is really me that is in here. Okay, so they paper outpost newsletter. Okay, oh, did it go? No, I didn't type the rest of what I wrote. Post newsletter. Okay, into Google. Let's see what we got. Ah, uh, Facebook. Oh, April's monthly evil newsletter is out from the paper outpost. Oh, it must be some link that's on Pinterest. Okay. Free monthly printables at the paper outpost. Okay, so let's see. It, these are links on Pinterest that you can find in Google. And let's see if it has the link. I don't know. All right, let's just see more. ba 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 Hey, nope, don't see the link there. What if I click on that? MailChimp? Oh, yep, yeah, there's a MailChimp link. And there it is. That's the easiest way in the world to find it. Okay, so what you do is you Google Paper Outpost Newsletter, and then you find a Pinterest link, and then you go to the main picture of the Pinterest link, and there should be a MailChimp link on there, and click on that, and that will take you straight to the sign-up page for the newsletter. How is that for easy complication? I know, right? But it, it's, it's what we got. And we do our best. That's all I can say. You also get a note from the bookmaker, which explains what a junk journal is and how to use it. And you can change that in any way, shape, or form that you want or use it as is with my blessings. And um, my videos come out. There's a bunch of other stuff that comes in the newsletter, too. Um, my videos come out Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, 7 a.m. Eastern Time. Podcasts, which are audio, come out Tuesdays and Thursdays, new material. And then every day of the week, you can watch podcasts on Spotify. Um, for the paper outpost. And um, I have an Etsy shop where you can find journals, bundles, kits, and fun things like that. And right now I do still have some pay, uh, fabric packs and they're actual fabric. Somebody was asking me what they are. These are not scans of fabric, but these are actual fabric pieces. Um, and you get a triple bonus of an old handwritten letter, about 125 years old, a vintage piece of a newspaper and vintage postage stamps as a bonus for that. And what else? I have um, fundals. Yes, I have fundals. Fundals are collections of old and interesting paper like antique ledger, receipts, postcards, checks, um, black and white photos, tea cards, you name it. A hundred plus pieces. Free priority shipping is included. This is an example. Of one. There's also two really cool things in here. Hard to see because it's packaged, but they are very cool pieces of paper. For, uh, interesting things for collectors and historians as well. Um, you never know what you're going to find in a fundal. Um, and uh, I have DigiKits, which are printable downloads. I have over 200 now. They're all themed. They're five pages each. They're computer files that you purchase on my Etsy shop, and then you save and download them to your computer. If you ever lose them on your d computer or your device, they're always stored for you in your um, Etsy account in Etsy. So I highly recommend you use your Etsy account to purchase them as opposed to a guest account because then it's just a little harder for you to find later if you want to go back and find them. I also have a print and mail service. If you like the idea of printed um, digi kits but don't like to print or don't have a printer, I will print them out for you in batches of 10 digi kits. I only need you to buy the print and mail option and then send me the list of the 10 digi kit names that you want or say surprise me. Uh, but if you have a list, send it to Pam at the paper outpost.com. That's my email address or through Etsy message. Just here's the list of 10. And that's that. And I have a t-shirt shop. If you like the phrase create with reckless abandon or everything is a craft supply until proven otherwise, there you go. You can get that on a t-shirt, a sweatshirt, a zip hoodie, a mug, a tote, or a water bottle. And uh, fun for gift giving for yourself, family, friends, or other crafters. And then you can find me on Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Facebook group. Come and join the Paper Outpost Facebook group. That's the easiest way to find it. Type in Paper Outpost Facebook group and you'll find it. Um, you can type that right into Facebook or just Google that and you should find the main link. And um, all those links are down below if you so choose. And um, 
Remember, the fun can be simple. And you can be pouching it before you know it. Um, create with reckless abandon, and I will see you next time. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.